Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Holy Cross Women's Basketball Show. I'm Kevin Shea, joined alongside by the head coach of Holy Cross, Bill Gibbons. And, uh, Coach, since we last talked, you played two games. You're 6-3 and three overall, 1-1 one and one in the two games you played. You beat Hofstra in overtime. You lose to UNH on the road at UNH. Looking at this Hofstra game, three players in double-double. Three players had double-doubles, double doubles, which right. is incredible. Right. You had 56 rebounds, 19 offensive rebounds which I'm looking at and I'm saying, this is incredible, and it's still not even a season high for rebounds, both right. offensive and total. It's incredible. Right. Well, I think we're a better rebounding team, obviously, Kevin, and um, w when we rebound, we win. I, I have that up in the locker room. I mean, and, and it might be cliche, but it's it's true. And uh, the funny thing is we put a an orange plastic uh, 1099 uh, rebounder thing over the hoop to, uh, to make the – every shot be a miss and I keep saying assume the miss and in the games I'm saying make believe the orange thing is on their hoop you know right. that, that you you because it's such a mentality and uh, you know we talk about Togo Palazzi being a great oh, rebounder God, and not uh, yeah and and all he talks about is wanting the ball more and that's Lauren's gone to 13 rebounds a game which is unbelievable yes. Megan Swords is rebounding but even our guards Avery has 13 so right. it's a mentality it's simple we don't rebound at New Hampshire we lose we rebound the heck out of it against a really good Hofstra team, and we win. So I think we learned the lesson, and we know what we have to do uh, to win basketball games. And one of the things, too, I think I, I look at, and there's a correlation obviously there, but even shooting the ball, like the Hofstra game, you didn't have a particularly great night shooting sure, the ball, right. certainly from three-point range, but even whatever it was, like 40, around 40, 41%. But 19 offensive rebounds, you think of how many extra shots that is. Right. And then 56 total rebounds, how many times you're limiting the opponent to just one shot. Right. I think it was 19 for us and five for them. So there's 14 extra possessions that we get that they right. don't, I mean, in offensive rebounds. So. Right. And you talk about turnovers. Now, if you can be plus two or three in turnover, now you're, you're talking right. 15, 17 extra possessions more than your opponent gets. You're going to win 99% right. of the games in that. So it's, you know, it's a simple thing, but you've got to be focused in and locked in. And rebound is such a mentality thing, such an attitude thing, Kev, and such a, for the young uh, boys and girls out there, Great rebounds assume every shot's going to be a miss, except their own. And right. they usually know whether they're going to make a miss. But every, uh, every shot by their opponents or by their players is like a pass to them. I'm right. going to get it off the glass. Right. So it's, uh, it wins games, and, and it's been a big reason that we've had the turnaround this year. A lot, another thing that a lot of it can be mental is free throws. And I think you've been yeah. shooting free throws exceptionally well this year. And then again, particularly the second half, and that's – you know, in games that you haven't shot that well from the line, it's been the first half. You've been maybe two of eight in the first half, but the second half, 12 of 14, right. you know, which is, right. to me, is is that's the look of a winner and that's the feel winning of time. a championship right. team. Right, exactly right. And I always say uh, free throw shooting is contagious because once your team starts missing free throws, everything everything's like life and death, and it looks like a, a thimble, the, the hoop. When guys, guys stop making free throws, it's just free and easy, and it looks like a hula hoop, and I'm going to make it. So we've tried to just get in the same routine every time. We work on them at practice and, and shoot the ball. With, picture a swish. I can follow through, as my dad always said. I can follow through. And um, deep breath. Deep breath first. Picture a swish. I can follow through. And it's a big part of the game. You've got to make free throws. And don't schedule a game the day before the start exactly. of finals. It's one of the oh, lessons I learned that was learned. Lesson. The UNH <laughs> game was the day before the start of finals at an academic don't school. Do. At yeah, UNLV, you, you, you made me do that, right. but not at exactly. Holy Cross. So. <laughs> when they were the Learn, Rebels. Lesson learned. Lesson <laughs> learned. <laughs> we'll take a break and come back with plenty more of the Holy Cross Women's Basketball Show right after this. With my Bay State Savings Bank mobile app, I don't need to drive to a local branch to deposit my money. I can deposit a check just by taking a picture on my phone. Anywhere, anytime. Done. I just saved on gas and saved myself some time. It's a win for everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody! I know. Bay State Savings Bank is proud to sponsor the Friday Night Football Frenzy. Bay State Savings Bank. We take banking personally. Sullivan Group is an insurance and risk management services firm based in Worcester for over 60 years. Our company values, our family values. Committed to our clients and finding them the best solutions. Committed to being independent. Committed to our community. We live here, we work here, 
we volunteer here. The Sullivan Insurance Group. Committed to excellence. What you said, wine and spirits, where you'll shop in comfort one of the area's largest selection of over 1,500 domestic, international, and craft beers. A wide selection of fine domestic and international wines for any occasion, as well as unique premium liquors and handcrafted spirits. What you said staff is committed to exceptional customer service and finding specialty items for their customers. Visit whatyousaidliquors.com for monthly specials and gift certificates. Route 12 West Boylston, across from the manor. Percy's is a proud sponsor of the Holy Cross Women's Basketball Show. At Percy's, we've got it all. Appliances, electronics, televisions, and more. Percy's, 19 Glenny Street in Worcester, right off of Gold Star Boulevard. Visit us online at percys.com. Providing our customers with the highest level of quality, service, and value. Poochie's Fine Jewelry, 205 West Boylston Street in West Boylston. Hi, I'm Rocco Diverti, owner of Enchanted Fireside, Worcester, Massachusetts. Enchanted Fireside is a hearth product store. We sell gas burning, wood burning, and pellet burning stoves, fireplaces, and inserts. We help you with designs, we do the full installations, and we do service should you need it down the road. Our management, sales, and service staff are certified by the National Fireplace Institute in wood burning products, gas, and pellet burning products. Come and visit us at Enchanted Fireside, 728 West Boylston Street in Worcester. Portions of the Holy Cross basketball show are brought to you by Qdoba Mexican Eats. It's Meze Greek Tapas Bar and Grill, Worcester's only authentic Greek tapas, 156 Shrewsbury Street in Worcester. Portions of the Holy Cross Basketball Show are brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. America runs on Dunkin'. O'Connor's Restaurant and Bar, 1160 West Boylston Street in Worcester. Visit us at the Commercial Fruit and Garden Outlet. Personalized fruit and gift baskets for the holidays or any occasion. 1050 Southbridge Street on the Worcester Auburn Line. Beautiful to look at, delicious to eat. Welcome to the Compass Tavern. At the Compass, we offer a delicious menu featuring the best American style in New England dishes made from scratch in our kitchen. Whether it's lunch, dinner, or special celebrations, the Compass Tavern is the place to go. Welcome back, everyone. Well, Coach, uh, you have two more non-league games before the end of the year here, the end of the calendar year. Then you get into the Patriot League uh, schedule. How is the health of the team right now, and, and do you have players coming back? I know some have just come so, back. Right. We, we haven't been completely healthy. It's part of the game. Uh, unfortunately, we lost uh, Shannon Murphy uh, to an injury in practice the other day, one of our reserve forwards. Uh, so she'll be out for a while. Mia Mazur, our walk-on uh, guard, we're a little thin at the guard spot, and she broke her hand, but is coming back uh, hopefully in a couple weeks from that. And Janae Faulkner is still working to come back. Uh, from her injury, but we're hoping she'll be back for uh, the Bryant game after Christmas and then uh, have a game under her belt before the Patriot League. She's only played in one game, the URI game, that we probably don't win uh, without Janae. So she's a big, big factor. Uh, Maddie Dembski is back uh, pretty much to 100%, maybe 90% right now, and played a little bit, and we'll, we'll play in our uh, kids game uh, against Manhattan and moving forward, which is good. Uh, and other, other than that, we're pretty healthy. So we're starting to get there, but that's a big part of the, uh, of the season, uh, you know, and you got to get right. through injuries. And, and luckily now we're starting to get healthy, and I think it's going to help us be deeper. We only really have been playing seven players. I want to get to eight or nine once right. we get healthy. And with Janae Faulkner, too, you're talking about uh, someone who started for you last mm, year. You're talking game. about someone who comes in with an attitude. When, when she's on right. the court, there's an attitude like we talked about with Avery LaBarbro with a Lauren Manis. Right. No question about it. And a defensive stopper and someone that can rebound uh, out of the guard spot. So we really missed Janae's presence, but we don't want to rush her back. 
Patriot League is our second season exactly. that we really need her for, and she's working hard with Alicia, our athletic trainer, to get back. What does Dembski bring to the table? Because folks haven't seen her. She just right. played a little bit in the UNH game, but right. what does she bring to the table? What do you expect of her? She that's one of the smartest players we've had. Very, very intelligent from a great uh, program, uh, Villa Maria Academy in Erie, Pennsylvania, state champions, and was a first-team all-league player. So she was very heavily recruited. She's a 6'2 kid that can really shoot it. Uh, can rebound it and a great passer. So she'll just bring us a little more depth in that front court. Uh, we also can go three forwards uh, with her and, uh, and Lauren, uh, who can both play out in the wing and someone like Megan or Alucci. So we can go with a little different look now uh, that Maddie's uh, healthy and can, can give us uh, a little more depth. And that's what I was going to ask is now, I don't know that you've ever had uh, that opportunity to go with a group who is 6'2", 6'1", 6'3". We have I don't think you've ever a had a while. front court that big. No, maybe back in the old days when we had Amanda Abraham was about 6'1". And, That's right, as a and, guard. As a guard, right. And we went really big up front and we're really good in the With zone. With Lisa Andrews. Yes, exactly. That was the uh, the time. And I don't know who the other Foley? Uh, forward. Caitlin Foley? Might maybe? have been Caitlin Foley. Is right. So we haven't in a while, but I think it'll give us a different look. We can play some 2-3 zone and be really long. Uh, along the back line and and we can run the offense and pound it inside because one of their guards is going to have to play one of those uh, right. six one kids or six two kids and we can get it inside so we're tweaking with that but uh, uh, I, I it'll be nice once we get healthy anytime as a coach you want to have enough depth to uh, uh, you know to play enough players to, to wear teams down so I'm excited and knock on wood I hopefully can stay healthy going into the Patriot League. Alucci Azema is a, is a player we mm. just touched on briefly, but I got to see her in the Hofstra game. I thought she's a really good player for you, played well there. I know she had a good game at UNH. Point-wise, rebounds, right. steals, blocks, seems to be able to do a little of everything and can play but, a, a couple different positions for you. Right, and, and, I, and I think she's been the most pleasant surprise because she came from Rhode Island, two-time state play, player of the year in Rhode Island, but as I kidded around with her, play, being the... Player of the Year in Rhode Island is like being the richest man in a poorhouse. You know, you don't, there's not <laughs> great competition. Patty Fitzgerald's going to come for you. <laughs> swear oh, bad, the, Patty will. The F-bombs will be coming, coming from Patty Fitz. That's right. She won't like me hearing that, but uh, I, I uh, like me saying that about her her home state. But she has been a pleasant surprise. She's a joy to coach. Her sister, Agetchi, is, is obviously a clock across the city and having a nice career there. But she can do so many things. She takes it to the basket, even if you play off her. Her one thing she's going to do is be able to knock down that 15-foot jumper because now teams are going to play way off her. And if she can knock down that, but she rebounds. I think she's averaging like 16 or 17 minutes and yeah. for that production she's got about seven or eight points a game yeah. and, and five or six rebounds a game you'll take that all night so Alucci has been a pleasant surprise along with Avery and Maddie Dembski and Kelly Petro keeps working to get better so those four freshmen I'm very very uh, pleased with and we talk about this now that finals are over and you get this basketball one-on-one -on -one, -on -one, you get right. you know a month or five weeks of it how beneficial is it for the freshmen because in terms of they now understand a little bit more about the college mm. game and maybe their strengths and weaknesses, you right. as coaches understand more. Because as you said, you scout them in AAU, you scout them in high school, but it's not the same. It's not right. apples and apples. No now question. you've seen them against a Boston college. You've seen them against right. a UNH, Brown, against these really good teams, and you can say, okay, this is what we need to work right. on. Right, exactly. I used the Kevin Shea line the other day. I said, now this is basketball 101, girls. Your academics is done. Now you concentrate on basketball, all right, and coming together as a team and doing some community service, which we're, we're, we're going to be doing over this time. So once they leave after the kids' game Wednesday, they'll be back on the 27th, and then they don't go back to class till the 23rd of January. So that's a, a lot of time yeah. of like almost four weeks of coming together as a team, and, uh, and that's when our best teams have really gelled. So that's a good point. Plus, it gives you time to get in the gym and get better. Oh, yeah. And lifting, too, with the weights. Right. You know, you lift. can just go. No you can question. do almost double sessions if you're practicing. You can go lift in the morning, practice get in the Get him to Coach Ollie. Vice versa, right. right. And right. that's such a big part of the game now, so you don't wear down. All right, plenty more to come on the Holy Cross Women's Basketball Show. Stay with us, everyone. With my Bay State Savings Bank mobile app, I don't need to drive to a local branch to deposit my money. I can deposit a check just by taking a picture on my phone. Anywhere, anytime. Done. I just saved on gas and saved myself some time. It's a win for everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody. I know.
A-State Savings Bank is proud to sponsor the Friday Night Football Frenzy. A-State Savings Bank, we take banking personally. Percy's is a proud sponsor of the Holy Cross Women's Basketball Show. At Percy's, we've got it all. Appliances, electronics, televisions, and more. Percy's, 19 Glenny Street in Worcester, right off of Gold Star Boulevard. Visit us online at percys.com. It's Meze Greek Tapas Bar and Grill, Worcester's only authentic Greek tapas, 156 Shrewsbury Street in Worcester. The Fixed Burger Bar, handmade burgers, elixirs, and shakes for whatever ails you. Mark Bernier is your Worcester area Edward Jones financial advisor. Whether you're planning for retirement, college, or protecting your financial future, give Mark a call at 508-755-1213. Hi, I'm Rocco DiVerti, owner of Enchanted Fireside, Worcester, Massachusetts. Enchanted Fireside is a hearth product store. We sell gas burning, wood burning, and pellet burning stoves, fireplaces, and inserts. We help you with designs, we do the full installations, and we do service should you need it down the road. Our management sales and service staff are certified by the National Fireplace Institute in wood burning products, gas, and pellet burning products. Come and visit us at Enchanted Fireside, 728 West Boylston Street in Worcester. Before or after the Crusaders hit the court, come on down to Bentley Pub in Auburn, Route 12 near the junction of the Mass Pike. Visit us online at BentleyPub.com. After the game, come on down to Flip Flops on Main Street in Holden. Good food, good friends, good times. Flip Flops on Main Street in Holden. The Boynton, 117 Highland Street in Worcester. Visit us online at BoyntonRestaurant.com. Portions of the Holy Cross Basketball Show are brought to you by the Texas Roadhouse, Lincoln Plaza in Worcester. Chick-fil-A in Worcester proudly supports the Holy Cross women's basketball team. Come on down to our brand new location at 80 Gold Star Boulevard in Worcester. Chow Bella Restaurant, Pizza and Catering Service. Located at 402 Grove Street in Worcester. The best caterer for four years running. Welcome back, everyone. Joining me now is Brendan Sullivan, the interim athletic director here at Holy Cross. And uh, Brendan, when well, you've been here, interim is in some ways just a tag, but you've been here for a few years. Um, just talk about first your experience here, because you've been here for, for a little while and, and how it's gone getting to know the lay of the land and, and everything that's involved in your job. Sure. Um, first of all, thanks for having me, Kevin. Um, I've been at Holy Cross for four years, uh, joined here from uh, Stonehill College, where I was fortunate to serve as the athletic director uh, for seven years. And for me, it was an opportunity to join a, a great institution like Holy Cross. Um, a lot of similarities, I think, between Holy Cross and Stonehill. Um, good academic institutions in their respective areas and in their respective athletic leagues. And an opportunity to join Holy Cross with a rich tradition, um, both as an institution and then athletically. And really what um, was important to me was being a part of a team that worked to rebuild um, and enhance some of that tradition and legacy here at Holy Cross. Um, certainly uh, on the cusp of, at the time, four years ago, looking at a facility expansion that is now the Luth Athletic Complex at the Heart Center um, is tremendous. Um, and to be part of that and see it start from a development phase through you know, some fortunate donors, some gracious people coming forward and um, giving the commitments that allow us to do this not only for our current student athletes, but for you know, the generations of Crusaders that will come thereafter. Um, just professionally and personally, really, really important for me um, and wanting to be a part of that. And then as um, you've said before, you know, being at an institution where academics are so important, um, want our student athletes to have the best opportunity they can during their four years here. And that's what we talk and, and really preach about is they have four years with us and we have to make sure that that time is as valuable as it can be. But at the same point, for a majority of them, they're going to graduate into their professions, whatever that may be, um, and making sure that they are best prepared for that. Um, it's impactful 
and you can, you can play a role in their development. And when you listen to many of our alums that come back and talk about the role athletics played in their overall education and how they learn to work within a team, how they learned adversity and how they learn to overcome challenges and how that's applicable for whatever profession they choose. Um, to do that at a place that values academics and, and athletics as a part of that role has been uh, pretty professionally rewarding. And uh, we talked about this just off camera, but in terms of the role of the athletic director and how much it's changed just even in the last five years, in the last 10 years, uh, so much of it now is fundraising for, you know, huge projects like this, you know, probably well over a hundred million by the time it was done, but how this is needed with the, the new facility here and the indoor turf and the, and the weight room just at, at competitively to mm -hmm. keep up with, with everyone in your league, all the non-league teams uh, that you play now and recruiting not only just athletes, but the kids that are coming up here just for the student experience. Mm -hmm. You know, they see something like this and they're able to, to skate, you know, the open skate, use the turf field for intramurals. I mean, this is something that benefits everyone, the practice courts. You know, there, there's, it's not just for the athletes up here. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's certainly a positive sign for an institution when you are a building um, and, and you are in a mode of expansion. So um, here uh, with the Luth Athletic Complex for, for us, there's two other major building projects um, going forth for the college here in the next few months with the Recreation Center and the Performing Arts Center. That's a sign of vibrancy on a campus, and not every campus is in a position, and, and because of the institution that Holy Cross is, um, the great alumni support we receive and the great leadership we have, we're able to enter that phase moving forward. Um, to your point about the athletic director role, it, it has changed, and there is you know, an emphasis on resources. And in an economic time where um, higher education resources are changing, um, we have to be able to self-generate um, many of our revenues and increase and enhance what we're providing for our student athletes. Um, one, to ensure our competitiveness, but two, to also make sure that we're able or we're not becoming a burden on the institution. Again, at an institution like Holy Cross, where we represent a quarter of the student population, we bring much to this campus and much to the student and, and the um, academic institution. But at the same point, we have to make sure that um, our goals, our objectives are held within you know, the confines of our resources and budgets. And when we need to go out and do more or, or garner something for our student athletes, whatever that tool is, whatever that magic um, piece of equipment might be, that we're working and, and sharing that story with the folks that have the capability to give. And, and they also are part of our success. So we can point back and say, you know, the Crusader Athletic Fund through the guidance of um, Nate has grown almost a million and a half dollars in his five years here. That's really impactful to our bottom line operating budget um, to grow those resources and provide our teams with experiences for trips or games or opportunities um, to provide our coaches with the tools to go out and recruit further and to bring our students and bring prospective students. To your point, once you bring our students to campus, our prospective students to campus, they're going to look at these facilities and be wowed. You know? so, Hopefully at that point, that's where you know, we're getting that commitment and we're sealing that um, as part of our overall conversation with that student. And they're gonna help us build and, and move forward for the generation that they're gonna be here and the generation thereafter. All right, Brendan, thanks so much for Appreciate joining it. us. All right, and we'll see you, you around campus. Appreciate it. That's Brendan Sullivan, the interim athletic director. We're back with more of the Holy Cross Women's Basketball Show right after this. With my Bay State Savings Bank mobile app, I don't need to drive to a local branch to deposit my money. I can deposit a check just by taking a picture on my phone. Anywhere, anytime. Done. I just saved on gas and saved myself some time. It's a win for everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody. I know. Bay State Savings Bank is proud to sponsor the Friday Night Football Frenzy. Bay State Savings Bank. We take banking personally. Antonio's Pizza by the Slice, located in the heart of Worcester at 268 Chandler Street. Visit us online at www.antoniospizza.com. Wings Over Worcester, right in the heart of Worcester at 1 Kelly Square. Order online at wingsover.com. The Hilton Garden Inn in Worcester is a proud sponsor of Holy Cross Women's Basketball, conveniently located on Major Taylor Boulevard in Worcester. Portions of the Holy Cross Basketball Show are brought to you by Tavern in the Square, now open in Lakeway Commons on Route 9 in Shrewsbury. 
The Flying Rhino, a unique gathering place offering an eclectic mix of food and drink in a cool, casual atmosphere. Located right on Shrewsbury Street in Worcester. Quinn's Irish Pub on West Boylston Street in Worcester. From appetizers, lunch, dinner, or our weekly specials, our pub selections are a must on your night out. The Bagel Inn, 785 Main Street, Route 122A in Holden. Open daily at 5.30 a.m. Welcome back, everyone. Well, Coach, uh, as we mentioned, two more games in this calendar year, right. non-league games, and then you get into the league schedule. And as we said, that's the second season and the ticket to the NCAA tournament. From what you've seen score-wise, looking at video, how does the league look this year and which teams look really strong? Yeah, that's uh, it, it's pretty much shaken out the way I, I, I thought uh, Bucknell has is, is played a tough schedule and is playing very well. American has played a real tough schedule. They played Stanford, went to a tournament in Hawaii and uh, are playing well. They were picked 1-2. Lehigh has a good record, about, about the same as us. The only surprise is Loyola, who I actually thought would be first or second in the preseason poll. They ended up third, have everyone back, but they got a player back that was first team all league, Bree Betts White, and they're just not gelling right now, but they'll be dangerous, uh, and we have them early uh, at the Hart Center, I think a game on Channel 3, so that'll be a tough test. Colgate's playing much better from the bottom of the league. Uh, Marissa Mosley, the UConn assistant coach is now the head coach there and they're improved so I think top to bottom from one through ten the league is going to be the best it's been in the last three or four years anyway but I would say Bucknell American uh, Lehigh are the teams uh, you know to, to beat right now. Now uh, you and I have talked about the, the kids game but uh, you right. know that it's in the 10th year 11th year sure. Phil Giarusso sure. you Jeff Oliver started, got together right. and started this thing years ago uh, you know, when you started it, you, generally speaking, when people start things, they never know how big they're going to be or right. how long they're going to last. Right. right. What was the feeling going into this, starting it, and looking back on it now after a decade plus? What do you think? Yeah. About it? Uh, let's see what happens. Let's see if we get some. And I think we had 600 the first week and uh, the first year we did it. And uh, this year we're going to have about 16, 1700. Hopefully, uh, the Burncoat High School choir is. Uh, chorus is singing the national anthem, so we're we're starting to get more public schools uh, kids involved. But I never envisioned it to go this big. We've had up to 2,700, and Phil's been a big help uh, calling the principals. And I guess it all depends on the time of year. Next year it will be uh, our first league game after the first of the year because we don't have a game in this December time. So, um, you know, I'm just very proud. I, I, I talked to the kids about being a Worcester public school kid. And, and the best thing was when a couple of the teachers said to me, Bill, this is better than Christmas Day for some of these kids. This is right. their best day of the year. They never get to go to a college, never mind Holy Cross or a game. And, and, and our girls high-fiving them, win or lose uh, uh, on the way out, just makes me feel really good. So I think we're six and three in the game, and hopefully we can go seven and three and beat Manhattan this week and uh, have a Merry Christmas. Well, you're four and one at home. Right. So, I mean, you, I don't know, it's early in the season still, but the shooting here at the Hart Center and, you know, what is it, the second year here now with the, right. with the new gym, the new floor, and, right. and being able to go there, how much do you think that plays into it? Because remember, for, for years when you had the floor cut off right. at the end, you could shoot free throws on the side hoops, but right. you couldn't do anything. We're doing a lot more. That's a good point. We're doing a lot more shooting, and, and, uh, and I told the team we've got to protect home court. The rest, and when we get into the league, let's beat Manhattan, but in the league, we want no one to beat us in the league at home. And if you can hold serve at home and go 9-0, and you're going to be pretty high in the standings if you can steal some on the road. So I think this has been a great home court advantage. Our crowds have been good. I think we're a fun team to watch with Avery this year and Lauren playing so well and Megan, uh, that we're a fun team to watch. So I th hope the viewers out there will come up and uh, see us over break when we, we really need some fans till the students come back. But uh, I think this is going to be a big home court advantage for us. All right, Coach. Best of luck right. in the, uh, Merry the kids Christmas. game. Merry yes. Christmas to, to you and your Happy family. holidays, everyone. We'll see you after the new year. And, uh, yeah, let's get one against me. Manhattan and Bryant and then go into league play but uh, great to be with you Kev. Well said just what he said happy holidays everyone we'll see you in the new year.